so our first talk will be presented by Professor Iso uh, Tanaka from, uh, from Kyoto University. So let me just uh, briefly introduce Professor Tanaka. So Professor Tanaka is, is a very famous uh, scientist in the area of using AI for, for materials discovery. So he's actually working in the field of using both first principle calculations and also data centric science. So I'm very interested to see how Professor uh, Tanaka will combine these two tools and uh, use them as a, as a powerful tools for the, uh, for the application, for example, for the state of the art uh, theoretical tools for the issues in the materials science and engineering. And in parallel to the theoretical work, he's also leading uh, cutting edge activities in the experiments and the characterization side on the nano and the microstructures of materials uh, using different uh, advanced technologies such atomic uh, resolution, electron microscope and synchrotron facilities. Uh, he has published numerous papers uh, with a total number of citations around uh, 21,000 with a pitch index of 65, which is really, really uh, impressive. So uh, without further ado, I will now hand over to uh, Professor uh, Tanaka. Uh, I would like to say my personal thanks for, for you to be able to agree to, to join us today. It's, I know it's a bit late in Japan, probably it's like eight, nine, 10, ish in the, in the evening so I, we really appreciate you you could accommodate that and it was really a pity that we cannot welcome you today uh, in person but we really hope the COVID situation will become better and we really want to invite you to visit Lafa at some day hopefully in the summer but we can definitely discuss uh, which when will be the best time for you to visit us and to talk to colleagues within this room probably in a more uh, friendly uh, or close uh, way. So without further ado, uh, Professor Tanaka, it's your turn. Thank you, Jen, for a very kind introduction. Mm -hmm. So let me share my slide. Huh? Uh, uh, probably. Hmm? Change this. Okay. Okay, great. We can see your slides well. So thank okay. you very much. Yep. And over to you. So good morning, everybody, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Of course, uh, uh, we are nine hours ahead. So this is 7 p.m. in Japan. <clears throat> it is my great honor and pleasure to give a talk at Lafayette University. It's really a pity that I'm unable to uh, join you on site. I'm really frustrating, but anyway, let me start. So the title today is uh, shown here, Data-Driven Discovery of New Inorganic Materials. <clears throat> Before going to my talk, uh, let me introduce my team members uh, at Kyoto University. Uh, Dr. Togo, who is now uh, moved to NIMS in Tsukuba City, and Dr. Seko, and Dr. Hayashi that they uh, played very important roles. All right, material scientists in inorganic chemistry domain are always keen to discover new compounds. They may trigger realization of excellent properties such as uh, superconductors, uh, sorry, state electrolytes or uh, some electrics. We have been using data-driven approaches for material discovery. For this purpose, of course, we need materials data. Then the question is, where can we find materials data? So it can be classified into three, depending on the source of the data, uh, something from the experimental result, as in these databases, or first principles calculations, and automated experiment, typically in-house database. Although we have been working uh, a lot on the first principles calculation, today the time is limited. So I will focus mainly on number one and the number three. 
Okay, let me start by uh, the analysis of this database, Inorganic Crystal Structure Database, ICSD. This is a newly discovered, a number of newly discovered compound in ternary or pseudo-binary ionic compounds uh, uh, plotted against the year of discovery. The total number of uh, such compounds are 8,300. This is much, much smaller than the uh, number of organic molecules, but inorganic crystals uh, much smaller number for the discovery. And about 40% are oxide. And it seems the discovery rate is somehow decreasing. It seems to suggest that the easily synthesizable compounds and or compound in focus chemistry domains, such as in lithium, uh, mixed oxide and something have already been discovered. In other words, there are not much leftovers. So the question arises, can we continue or accelerate discovery of such new compounds? Let me show another example of the uh, analysis. This is quaternary or pseudo ternary uh, ionic compounds. The, the number is still increasing, but the, uh, about 80% are oxides. So it seems to suggest that there is still good chances for discovery of a quaternary or more complicated systems, especially for non-oxide systems. But uh, uh, those were discovered in 20 or 30 years in human history. So if we want to discover uh, something new in a short time, we need to use an efficient method for the discovery. That is what we call recommender system. Now I will explain what is recommender system in a minute. But uh, uh, today I will talk about recommender systems. The, the first part is a recommender system for discovery of chemically relevant composition, CLC. I will explain CLC, what is CLC in a minute uh, using ICSD database. The two methods we use, one is a recommender system with elemental features, and the other one is a recommender system by tensor decomposition. And in the second part, uh, I will show some result using in-house parallel experimental data using LABAT to, uh, for the discovery of experimental synthesis condition and novel compounds. Okay, recommender system. I think uh, you uh, every day encounter recommender system whenever you use e-commerce. When you buy something on Amazon.com or Netflix.com, then you, if you buy something, they already recommend you to buy something else. The algorithm behind that is called recommender system. So in the chapter one, uh, the recommender system is used for the uh, CRC, the discovery of CRC. So what is CRC? If you look at uh, this type of database for this pseudo binary, this is hypothetical, but uh, probably you will find this type of data, 1418614212, such compounds are found to be existent. If you make thermodynamical analysis, or first principles calculation and plot the formation energy against composition, you may find that those compositions are on the convex hull. It means that they are thermodynamically stable. So this is a very crude 
definition of CRC. Some other composition, such as them, are not on the convex hull. So they are most likely not CRC. Traditionally, uh, people are trying to discover new compound based on the knowledge of the CRC. But when they are uh, found to be CRC, they use uh, some kind of elemental features often existent on this type of uh, periodic table. And based on the similarity of group electronegativity or ionic radius, whatever, if the electronegativity of this element A is similar to element P, then they consider that P and for team, this compound is probably existent. So this is this is a, a traditional way for the prediction of new CRC. This has been somehow successful because there has been no alternative way. But as you can guess, this is not very efficient way. So we will use uh, this type of analysis in a modern way, using data-centric uh, uh, method. We have adapted so-called binary classification. If the, it is, the compound is available, then we, provi we provide uh, the value one. If it is not CRC, then we provided uh, the number zero. But uh, unfortunately, data is available only for CRC. If we plot these compounds on the feature space or our chemistry space, here I plotted only uh, two dimensional cases, but uh, the dimension we will consider will be something like 300. But in a, such a high dimensional space, we can still plot those ICST registered composition. And those uh, grid point are initially ICST not registered. But there are many different possibilities. One possibility is they are not CRC. But the other possibility is they are simply unexperimented conditions or difficult to be formed or synthesized. So uh, we want to distinguish them. So we uh, use uh, this binary classification and uh, to estimate recommendation score at an arbitrary point in this uh, uh, space. If you look at some textbook like uh, scikit-learn documentation, then this is an example data. And there are many different kinds of classifiers and uh, Depending on the use of the different classifiers, the result looks different. So we need to check uh, all these techniques and found that these three techniques are quite useful. The chemistry space for our search is shown here. Uh, for the training set, we used ICST registered 33,000 compound, they are somehow biased to oxide or chalcogenide or uh, those uh, elements. But anyway, there are no other possibilities. We use them. And for the ICST unregistered, uh, there are uh, more than 1 million uh, grid points. So uh, we handled them. For the elemental features, if you look at some uh, uh, periodic table on the wallpaper, then you can find many uh, numbers uh, in the tiny characters. They can be either intrinsic quantities of elements like atomic numbers, atomic mass, or heuristic quantities like electronegativities, 
for physical properties of elemental substances, something like melting point of element or boiling point of element. So altogether, there are 22 uh, kinds of elemental features. We use everything. On top of that, uh, we have constructed compound representation or compound features because we want to compare this AB compound and the CD2E4 such compound on equal footing. So those compounds are plotted in this feature space and use average, variance, skewness, etc. And also covariance of two features. For this compound, uh, we did the same. So altogether, the number of uh, features became more than 300. So let me show the result. We use ICSD uh, as a training data, and we have examined or validation was performed using the ICDD, another database data. And we removed uh, all the uh, overlapped data. So test data does not contain any data from the training data. So uh, by counting the number of the compound included in ICSD, ICDD in the test data, then we can evaluate the success rate of this type of recommendation and recommend a system. And by three classifiers, this seems the London Forest provide the best result. Uh, it means among uh, this uh, horizontal axis correspond to the ranking of predicted probability. And the, this bar chart correspond to the uh, this uh, within this uh, uh, ranking. So from zero to uh, ranking uh, top 1000, there are 180 uh, compounds are existent in a test set. It means that success rate is 18%, which is 60 times uh, higher than the random search. So this is quite a uh, good result uh, by using this random forest. So this result is plotted like this CRC map, what we call. As you can see, this uh, end member compound is changing. And also sometimes this end member compound changes. And you can see some uh, blue circles and sometimes red circles, depending on the recommendation scores, uh, which provide the information of the possibility to be CRC. This type of result is quite uh, useful for experimentalists, and many experimentalists, our collaborators, are interested in this type of analysis. So I will show three results uh, by the result by experimental people. This is Dr. Kanno uh, in the Tokyo Institute of Technology and who is uh, uh, very much famous for lithium ion battery, especially for solid state electrolyte. And uh, we provide data one, two, three, four, five, six for them in this pseudo ternary and they synthesized pinpoint and succeeded to uh, synthesize this compound. This is completely new compound. And also in this pseudo ternary, they succeeded to get this compound. The, for them to discover new compound is very important because they have skills and knowledge how to increase and how to manipulate that type of compound to increase the ionic conductivity because they are interested in ionic conductors for lithium battery. And they know that, they know the, how to do that. So for them, uh, the uh, information for the new compound is very important. And that was things we provided them. So next example is for the novel nitride. 
Similarly, those people in NIMS are interested in uh, 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 light emitting devices uh, from the nitride. And we provided them data uh, up to six, uh, 15 or 16 uh, uh, combinations with these recommendation scores. And they synthesize those materials because this is nitride, so uh, they need uh, such a high temperature and uh, special conditions. But since they successfully synthesize the various uh, new compound, and those compounds are uh, new, but the, the prototype structures were already known. But uh, this uh, one, uh, this 4319 compound, there were no identified phases. It means it is completely new compound without prototype structure known. That they made a uh, single crystal analysis and discovered uh, the existence of this uh, uh, ternary nitride, pseudo ternary nitride, which made them quite happy. Uh, this is a result by Professor Hosono's group, and they are interested in uh, light emitting semiconductors in nitride. The, they successfully synthesized this calcium zinc nitride, <clears throat> and which shows quite brilliant uh, lead color emitting uh, device uh, materials. Okay, so uh, this type of analysis seems to be quite useful for the experimentalist. But for us, we tried to improve our method. This was the motivation for the chapter two. And we used a different technique, tensor decomposition technique to discover CLC. <clears throat> so, I already explained the recommender system in e-commerce, uh, like in amazon.com. Uh, those uh, e-commerce uh, uh, merchant has a huge list of uh, users and items purchase record. User one bought this item three, items uh, one, three, five, and this is really huge. This is really big data. The, based on the analysis of that data, they uh, provide the target user, uh, uh, the estimation of recommendation scores for each item. And based on that recommendation score, they actually provide recommendation. The very primitive uh, uh, algorithm for this uh, recommendation system is uh, based on rating metrics. As I mentioned, this is a huge list of customers, millions or billions of customers list. And uh, they have the underlying assumption. It is unsupported, but quite reasonable seem to be. That is that the customer which has a similar taste tend to buy similar items. The customer A and C both bought item one and four, and uh, it is the same for customer H. Then uh, they consider that uh, this customer A and C may buy this item three as shown here. In the mathematic language, this assumption is called a low rank structure of this type of rating matrix. We use this simple algorithm to discover new chemically relevant composition. But instead of using this matrix, we use tensor. Here is our chemical composition candidate chemical composition or chemistry space. In the case of ternary, the number is something like 7 million 
uh, with these numbers up to eight. For quinary system, it will be 23 billions of combination made from the 66 different cations and 10 anions. 23 billions are really significantly large uh, combination. On the other hand, our knowledge in ICSD or other database are quite limited. If you compare with this candidate, you can realize how much the difference between our knowledge and the candidate space. But there are no other possibilities. This is the only data available up to now. So we use again this ICSD data for the training. The list of data, this pink area, this is non-overlapping with ICSD data. They will be used for the test data for the validation. As I mentioned, we use tensor instead of matrix. This is for the binary compound. The, here is a cation type 63, uh, 66 cations, 10 anions, and here is 170 combinations. The, for the binary compound, it is uh, third order tensor, but uh, for the ternary compound, it becomes fourth order tensor, which is, uh, I do not know how to visualize them in an easy way. But uh, uh, that can be schematically shown like this. The tensor factorization or tensor decomposition can be done. There are many different techniques available in applied mathematics community. The, we use Taka decomposition technique. Basically, the uh, huge tensor becomes a small tensor. Uh, this tensor is called core tensor. That, that can be done uh, by available uh, algorithm uh, available in the psychic tensor software. This is already a result of the Taka decomposition for the pseudo uh, binary systems or ternary systems. The, the horizontal axis corresponds to the length of the core tensor and uh, the vertical axis corresponds to the number of correct answers included in the test data. The orange bar corresponds to the top 100 compositions with high predicted rating. The, you can see that the result is almost independent on the result of the result of the length. And the number is something like 50 to 60. It means among top 100 composition with high predicted rating, discovery rate is 59% or better. Better means we took this correct answers just by uh, the result included in the test data. But in reality, there is a possibility that ACRC is not included in such an available uh, database. So we believe that discovery rate is better than 59%. And this is really astonishing number because this, uh, remember that the technique we use was just by the arrangement of the tensor element. No elemental discovery cryptos, or no ionic radius, no electronegativity, no heuristic uh, features, just by the rearrangement, no prior knowledge. But we were able to discover 59% for top 100. Even for top 3000, discovery rate was better than 25%. And in the previous uh, elemental features uh, uh, recommended system, the discovery rate was 15%. So 
it was better than uh, this elemental features. <clears throat> then we compare the result for the ternary and quaternary and quinary. For top 100, the result was not so different between ternary and quaternary. For top 3000, the quaternary was um, a lower uh, success rate than ternary, but still quite high. The, for the case of quinary, the result was 15%. So it's uh, much lower than uh, ternary or quaternary. But uh, we know the reason. <clears throat> the number of entry compound for the quinary was uh, much smaller than uh, ternary or quaternary. So that was the reason of the lower uh, success rate. But uh, remember that for the quinary system, the number of compound or candidate was 23 billion. So in order to explore quinary system, it is uh, still quite useful that we have this 15% of candidates. So discovery rate, such a discovery rate is uh, still quite useful uh, for the quinary system, we believe. So of course, uh, we want to uh, validate the result by actual experiment. But before that, for us, as I mentioned at the beginning, for us, the first principles calculation is a kind of routine. So we can routinely examine the, our uh, result by theoretical calculation, DFT calculation. The, this is the result for the rubidium oxide, indium oxide pseudo binary. And uh, in this pseudo binary, the compound with predict, high predicted rating uh, were these two compounds. The, we did uh, systematic DFT analysis. By the way, for this pseudo binary uh, system, only one compound uh, has been reported in ICDD. And these two compounds were not reported, has not been reported, but actually they were at least theoretically found to be thermodynamically stable. Similar analysis by DFT calculation were done for all uh, these 27 system. And among them, 23 were found to be on the convex how. So 85% of them were confirmed to be thermodynamically stable by DFT calculation. So we believe uh, they are quite promising result and all the data are on our open database, so everybody can reach them and use them for doing experiment. And just to search uh, GitHub SQL recommender, then you can find our data there. <clears throat> so we really want to uh, synthesize such novel compounds systematically, but things are not that easy because synthesis recipe of an as yet unknown compound is not given in the cooking book. So in order to synthesize them, we need to consult synthesis expert as I have shown before, but uh, they are not always available as you know. So uh, an alternative way is to ask artificial intelligence for successful synthesis conditions instead of cooking book. But in order to use artificial intelligence, we need data. So that was the motivation of uh, our uh, uh, parallel experimental data set uh, uh, trials. So, uh, uh, this was mainly done by uh, Dr. Hayashi, my group. <clears throat> so we are interested in any compound and for our purpose or for our lab, uh, 
synthesis of non-oxide is much more difficult. So we focused on oxide system and we have used many different techniques for uh, oxide uh, ceramic materials. Here I will show results for the polymerized complex method. And for the polymerized complex method, we need to prepare some solutions and dispensing them and dry and fire and then automated uh, characterization. And for the automated robot, we have constructed such a uh, funny uh, automated dispensing robot. And uh, this robot is just one robot is on this one table. And there are several tables in my lab and there uh, day and night <laughs> mixing uh, some uh, <clears throat> uh, solutions. The, uh, for each robot, they are capable of dispensing 300 samples continuously. And for starting materials of polymerized complex method, there are 28 elements we used and 32 starting materials uh, we have adopted. And for the candidate composition, we have chosen, uh, since this is pseudo binary, we have chosen two of, uh, out of 28 elements and there are 27 compositions. So altogether, uh, it becomes uh, 10,000 compositions. And among those 10,000 compositions, uh, about 1,000, about 10% of them are registered in ICDD PDF. Uh, in other words, the rest of the compound 9,000 are unknown compositions. But we can easily guess that they are pseudo binary compound in this type of quite popular uh, elements. So we cannot expect that there are much leftovers in this green areas. But anyway, uh, we did, uh, we have constructed uh, experimental data set from 32 starting materials and uh, uh, five different synthesis temperatures. So synthesis conditions correspond, uh, become uh, 66,000. And among them, uh, this area, 7,000 uh, correspond to the non composition And we obtained the experimental data within this uh, experimental conditions. And uh, within this uh, non compositions we found that a half of them are successful in synthesis. But Within this green area or in unknown composition area, we did 600 experiments, but none of them were successful. So this is uh, uh, the same as uh, our expectations. But anyway, we used all these 1,500 conditions uh, used as a training data. The, for this, uh, providing scores of the experimental data, we did systematic X-ray diffraction and characterization. And uh, in the case of this compound, if we find uh, the targeted compound, we provided the score of two. And if it's not available, then uh, we provided score of one. We can provide any numbers uh, because finally we will standardize the score uh, which fall within one and minus one. The plus one correspond to the successful uh, condition and the minus one correspond to unsuccessful conditions. And we put all our data into fourth order tensor composed of two different kinds of element and uh, composition and firing temperature and made 
Taka decomposition technique to estimate the unexperiment uh, recommendation scores for unexperimented conditions. The result for the recommendations. Mm -hmm. Recommendation score for the unexperimented condition are shown here. This is the distribution uh, plotted in a logarithmic scale of the frequency uh, for the uh, plotted against the predicted score. It is centered at zero uh, for uh, 64,000 uh, experimental conditions. And the Top 300 unexperimented compositions are located here. Remember that this is logarithmic scale, so this is small numbers, top 300. And this top 300 conditions are break, broke down into successful and unsuccessful conditions uh, because we did experiments for these top 300 uh, conditions. And blue one correspond to unsuccessful result, and orange one correspond to successful condition. Still, you can find successful result is not that much. But uh, if we plot fraction of successful condition against the standardized predicted score, then it increase almost linearly with the standardized predicted score. So the conclusion is the success rate is proportional to the recommendation score. So based on this result, uh, we explored this green area. As I mentioned at the beginning, we saw that in this green area, there are very little leftovers or no leftovers. But actually, there were, we found some leftovers. One example is lanthanum vanadium oxide. And we found that at higher uh, firing temperatures, the recommendation score is uh, reasonably high. And actually, we have succeeded to synthesize this novel compound. Uh, in, in a group and we succeeded to reproduce the experimental result. This is one example. The other example is lanthanum antimony oxide. This was also with relatively high recommendation score and we were able to analyze this result and uh, discover a new compound. So within this uh, green area, we were able to find uh, two compounds quite efficiently. Okay, this is the uh, end of my talk. I talked on a recommender system for discovery of uh, a CRC and using uh, elemental features. And uh, in the second part, uh, I mentioned that tensor decomposition technique without using any elemental features, any prior knowledge, no first principle result, just by the arrangement of tensor element seem to be quite useful to go into the uh, 23 billions of world. And then the third chapter, I showed some in-house parallel experimental result based on our in-house robot, which is still some preliminary result, but it's a kind of prototype result. And uh, uh, that seemed to be quite useful to discover some new compound. Okay, this is the end of my talk. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, Professor Tang. Uh,